Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, we can begin. Hello, everybody. Welcome. <clears throat> I will uh, talk a totally different topic. It's not absolutely similar to the previous topic. Absolutely different. So I will talk about flaky tests or how to deal with flaky or unstable tests. Uh, <clears throat> uh, introduction. <laughs> when you write some, you or your company, like create some software, writes some software, you want to be sure that it works, right? You want to be sure that your software works. Uh, and works now and will work in future also after any kinds of changes, refactorings, new features, and so on and so on. And the only working way to be sure that your software works is automated tests. You write code, you write tests, you run tests uh, regularly, and you can be sure that your software works. At least this is how we work at Codeborn. We do use pair programming, we do use extreme programming, we write code, we write tests, and we are always uh, sure that everything is working as, as we expect. Let me show what is automated tests. Let me just run some automated test that runs against some randomly picked uh, site in internet. Yeah, this is how uh, this is how automated test looks like. Uh, uh, it opens a web browser. It starts clicking some buttons, start typing some values, some text inside, and so on and so on, and, and verify that the, there is a correct page on the on the page, uh, correct text on the page, and so on and so on. So these are automated tests. They, these are basically robots who help us to, to verify that software works. There actually are different kinds of, of, of automated tests, like unit tests, uh, integration tests, UI tests, end-to-end -end tests, and so on and so on. But all of them have one common problem. Like, actually, they have many of problems. <laughs> but the biggest problem is that these tests are all, uh, often flaky. What it means? Flaky test is a test that fails, uh, but not always, <laughs> but uh, time to time, from time to time. This is a test that fails sometimes without any code changes. This is a problem. Uh, so it often looks like, like, like this is your build history, for example, and it always can happen, uh, happen that some build is green, some build is green, but oops, next build is red. Some tests have failed uh, without any changes. This is a problem. And when the test fails, why this is a problem? When the test fails, in theory, it should mean that you have found a bug. You have some bug to fix. But in case of flaky tests, you never know if this is a bug or the, uh, or the functionality is okay and this is a, just a flaky test just run a failure. This is a problem. A bug in a test. Yeah, it may be a bug in production code. It may be a bug in a test. We will see some cases Yeah, today. Uh, this is a picture that I always uh, often see. For example, QA engineer, like tester, comes to work and sees that uh, last build has uh, failed. And he has, for example, 30 tests failed. Uh, he says, okay, I need to, to investigate it. Let's investigate it. But a few seconds later, he decides, uh, well, mm, you will probably know what bad word is hidden here. Disgusting word is, ri is written here. Yeah, you know. He decides, well, okay, let's rerun the test. Probably next time it will become green. Ooh, let's hope so. Uh, yeah, so this is how often typical day of QA engineer looks like. Like he runs automated test or not he, but Jenkins, some GitHub actions or some like robot CI server uh, runs automated test and it takes probably, of course it varies from company to company, it probably t uh, takes like 20 minutes, let's say. Then some of them fail, fail. he decides to rerun, uh, rerun the test. It takes again about 20 minutes probably. And uh, still have uh, still some tests have failed. Probably some other tests have failed. And then he need to investigate why it failed. 
analyze failures, yeah, and it might take oh, much, much more, probably half of a day, probably the whole day. And this is a huge problem for me. This means that all, uh, all the release process is forced to wait until you clarify, was it a bug or was it just a flaky test? It, it takes a lot of time. It makes our release process much, much slower. This, this is, for me, this is a big problem. That's why uh, I like to say that our industry is in danger, actually, yeah. It's, it should be automated testing, but it's not really automated. It needs a lot of manual works from our side. That's, I am seeing that this is important topic that we need to discuss and we need to share our knowledge. We need to share our experience and like invent some ways to fight with flaky tests. So today plan is, I will show uh, my favorite collection of some flaky tests from real projects, from real life. They are kind, in, uh, kind of interesting. They are really tricky cases uh, that I have had been uh, investigating so for days, for <laughs> nights, for weeks, some, sometimes even for years. We will see, like five example like this. Uh, and in the end, we will try like to analyze a little bit what are typical reasons of flaky tests and how to fight them. So uh, let's start from my collection. Uh, for the beginning, let's see a very primitive example of flaky test. Uh, this is a very like classical example of Selenium test or UI test for, for web application. In this case, for Google search. Uh, the question is, what line in this test might be flaky, might fail sometimes? Uh, we, we have a typical Selenium test. The first line like opens a web driver and uh, opens a Google page in it, right? Uh, next line finds this input where we need to type in the query and uh, uh, third line clicks like submit button, like yeah, search, I want to search. And last line I verify that there is like expected number of search results. Which line of these lines might, might be flaky? Last one, yeah, yeah, that's the right answer. Actually, any, any of this line, let's see why. The first line might fail sometimes, not every time, but sometimes, for example, because of slow internet, or for example, because some of uh, our microservices is down. In case of Google, it's like never down. <laughs> Like, but in case of our software, our enterprise applications, uh, it often happens that some services not deployed or is down or something else, or some external dependency is not working today, or Amazon is pretty slow today, something like that. Uh, this line can also fail. Uh, for example, if the, uh, in case if this element is not rendered yet, if it's being rendered a little bit slowly today, something like that. This line, uh, this is a, uh, interesting why it, this line might uh, fail. Uh, last time when I tried, it failed with this exception. Hard to understand, but in reality it says that this element that we tried to click uh, is not clickable. And it's not clickable because some other element would receive the click. Basically, it means that our input is covered, our button, submit button is covered by some other uh, element. Let me show the video how it happens in reality. Don't read the text, currently the text are in Russian, sorry. Uh, but this is a video from running, running tests. So we are, uh, the first line worked, we opened it a browser, we opened Google. Second line worked, we typed in uh, the keyword. What's next? And now we are trying to find the submit button, but we cannot find it. But where is this? Where is this submit button? Where is button? Oh, here it is. It's hidden behind this preview uh, pop-up or whatever is this preview thing. It, this button is hidden behind the, this preview thing. And this test doesn't fail anytime. It fails sometimes because sometimes this preview is not rendered immediately, but with some uh, delay, 
And sometimes test can click this button before this pop-up appears. Sometimes not. Yeah, it it's called flaky. Yeah, sometimes it uh, it works, sometimes it fails. Uh, okay, uh, let's continue. Uh, and this line also may fail, probably because not all elements are uh, already rendered. Probably they are rendering a little bit slowly. Probably the list uh, is being loaded a little bit slowly. Again, not in case of Google. <laughs> Google always work, works fast, but in case of our applications, it of, often happens. Uh, so, to a little bit summarize the introduction, the reason of most flaky tests in the world are, from my experience, the following. Uh, the reason of flakiness are mostly as asynchronous requests, speed of requests, sometimes requests can be slow, can be faster, uh, sometimes the responses may come in different order. Sometimes the browser is a little bit slower or JavaScript executes a little bit slower than usual and so on. So this is the most common reasons of flakiness. And I have a good news. I'm happy to say that there is uh, a cure for these problems called Selenite. Selenite is a library for writing automated tests uh, and it solves uh, most of these problems. Selenite is like a library on top of Selenium. If you are writing tests in Java, yeah, it helps. Uh, if you rewrite the previous uh, Selenium test to Selenite, it looks a little bit more like concise or readable. Right? It's a little bit easier to, to read such a test, but this only uh, uh, the first advantage, but a really bigger advantage is that this test becomes much more stable. Why? Because Selenet uh, contains smart, so-called smart weightings inside. Any of these uh, lines actually does assert, it does, uh, it does verify that this element is visible, or uh, this element like disappears, is not visible, and so on and so on. It can check like text of element, color of elements, size of collection of elements, and so on and so on. And what is the biggest point is that any of these checks is smart. If it's not visible yet, then Selenite will wait a little bit. We call it smart weightings. It solves most of uh, problems with, with async requests uh, and so on and so on. Slow JavaScript and so on. Now, once again, any of this method will uh, wait up to four seconds if needed, only if needed. And of course, this timeout is configurable so, yeah, it's not a problem. And additionally, in case of test failure, Selenite also takes automatically a screenshot and saves the source of this web page. So it's easier to investigate why the test failed, what exactly there happened. Uh, this was a, like a brief overview of uh, yeah, most flaky problems that Selenite can solve. But the most interesting part is uh, the other 10%. These are really tricky flaky tests that are really interesting to investigate for me. And uh, my other examples are like from this non-trivial part of flaky tests, which, which are really tricky. I, I guess I will have like five examples. Uh, first two are more technical, others are more entertaining with video, with animations, clicking buttons and so on. So the first one is like more technical, but it's just an example of like a test. Uh, once upon a time, we had the test that was actually all the time was green, but started failing uh, at the place which uh, verified that some card which was displayed somewhere in the intern punk should have uh, expected expiration time, but it started failing. Yeah, o in autumn, when the autumn began, this test started failing, started to fall. Uh, this test looked like, like this, like some card should have text like expiration date December uh, 19. Uh, but starting from some day, this test start, started failing and in, in reality in browser there was visible other date, not this date, but this date for some reason. It was like missed magic, yeah? Why it started failing? Because we didn't change any code. Uh, 
when we looked into the code, we found a little different uh, difference. In production code, we found that this expiration time of the card was displayed using this code. But in test, which verified uh, the expiration time, the expiration date, uh, uh, this test was written using this code. Can you catch the difference? Uh -huh, exactly, right, yeah. And uh, yeah, this expression uh, gives uh, this fella and this expression give, gives this fella. Yeah, which one is correct? Which one is better? <laughs> Which one would you pick up? Yeah, this was an interesting challenge. Actually, it's quite, yeah. Was this uh, JavaScript code? No, it was Java code. Okay, but um, have you have you then uh, looked into the docs? Like, what is the difference and why Why is like off by, by an entire like year? Yeah, sure. Uh, after this test started failing, we started reading docs, yeah. <laughs> investigating <laughs> what exactly it means. And it appeared that, yeah, small or lower uh, letter means year. And upper letter means a week based year. What the fuck? What did it mean? Yeah, <laughs> you would say. Uh, let's see. Uh, s like lower uh, letter means actually the normal year as we will understand. Like, yeah, this is 19, 19, it's clear, yeah? But the upper case uh, letter means that this is a, a year calculated from a week of this day, or more exactly, this day was, oh, uh, sorry, I did, yeah, we factored this light for this one. Yeah, how this day, is, uh, day looked like inside of a week? This day, it was actually a Tuesday. The card expiration day was actually on Tuesday. And if we look in which week it's located, it's located in this week. And if you ask to which year this week belongs, actually there is a correct answer. This week belongs to uh, next year because most of this week is in this year. So the upper case means that actually for this day, yeah, the week based year is actually twenty. Yeah. This is this is crazy. <laughs> Who invented it? <laughs> but yeah, probably it, it is important for some accountants or something like that. Like yearly reports or something. Yeah, you can re read more details. So uh, summarizing uh oh yeah, the most f uh, yeah, uh summarizing. This is essentially a bug in the test code. Simple, but it worked most of the time. Most of the time. It failed only a few days in a year, up to three days, no more. And it failed even not every year, but only in some years. <laughs> but it was quite easy because during these three, uh, three days, it was uh, easy to reproduce the failure. It failed every time. It allows, it gives you like up to three days to debug the issue and understand what happens. It's, the next issues are much more complicated because you could not even debug them because they do not uh, fail next time. So when we, uh, we are composing a list of typical issues, typical problems, uh, yet another one is like bugs in tests. This is trivial, but like tricky box which work correctly most of the times. Yeah. Uh, let's see the next example. The our time. Yeah, we had uh, some test. Uh, again, UI test for Internet Bank, which opened some payment or created some payment, like submitted some amount, submitted some account number, click it, submit, and it very very rarely, probably once in hundred times. Uh, it failed uh, saying that status of the payment is wrong. It's not like completed payment, but it's like waiting payment for, for some reason. It was not absolutely clear why, why the status is uh, wrong. When we tried to debug this test or on, on my machine, it always worked, always. 
we could not reproduce the failure of this test. When we started uh, like investigating the code, we found the place. The problem was that uh, time of this payment, like payment time, was not in past, but was in future. And it was strange because the test actually created this payment like one second ago. Test creates a payment, it should be in past, but oops, it's in the future. How it's, how it's possible? It's strange. Yeah, we started investigating all the code and yeah, check was basically like this. I said that sometimes failed was like this. The time of this payment should be like in past, but it was in future sometimes, very rarely. It was like magic, yeah? Uh, we st yeah, and this was the only place how we actually initiated payment time, new date, no other options. Like it was not some other if which read this time from us, some other JSON or something like that. No, only new date. Yeah, it's still Java, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it seemed that it's not absolutely possible. How it would be possible to, uh, to investigate or understand what exactly happened. And uh, like uh, the last hope was just to read carefully all the application logs. And we started reading application logs during test run. And uh, at some moment we discovered one strange thing in logs. This is like a request log, which uh, for every incoming uh, HTTP request logs URL parameters response and so on. And we detected one strange thing in the request log. This log says that this request was like handled so many milliseconds, which is like impossible. It should be always positive number, like 10 milliseconds, thousand milliseconds, but not minus 3000, it, it like, it's not possible. So it was a signal that probably we yeah, should investigate, but what, <laughs> how, it, how it possible, I don't know. Yeah, uh, we started uh, yeah, trying different experiments, they, they didn't help, but finally what we did, uh, we uh, created a simple bash script, which actually uh, like run in cron every second, and just log at current time into a separate file. And what we found, we found magic here. Yeah, this is a result of this like bash script which runs every second uh, and logs current time. And yeah, you see a mystery here. Something happened here. So the problem was not with Java, was not with uh, like tests, but it's like system time, Linux system time. Uh, no, like Ubuntu, yeah, I guess it was Ubuntu. No, <laughs> interesting. No, it was just a dedicated continuous integration server like Jenkins on a separate machine. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, the mystery was solved like this. Uh, we found that this Jenkins server had actually two services for time synchronization. One, the first one is called NTP and another one is called system D, like this one. As much as I understand, uh, uh, in some older Ubuntu versions, uh, like probably this one was default, I guess. And starting from like next Ubuntu version, this one was default. And uh, administrators uh, like uh, upgraded Ubuntu, so that post service says, uh, yeah, left, both services were working all the time. And uh, yeah, the first one like uh, was uh, this NTP and it's, it worked uh, like regularly. And uh, next, another one was this service and also worked regularly. And the problem is that they connected uh, to different like servers, you know, the services connect always to some server to fetch current time. And they connected to different service and fetch at different times with quite a huge difference, three seconds. And sometimes uh, like bother at each other. <laughs> it was absolutely, uh, it would be impossible to find. It, we, we were just lucky and yeah, like uh, we really wanted to solve this issue. And uh, <clears throat> 
just uh, one like takeaway how to measure times in Java. We typically, if we want to measure how many seconds or milliseconds some code took, we typically write code like this, like start, end, and in the end write like end minus start. And yeah, because of this issue, I got to know that actually it's not really correct way to measure times. Sorry? Mm -hmm. uh, like it, it's correct, it works in most cases, uh, but really good way how to measure times is actually using nano times, nano time. This is a new method which uh, was added in Java 6 probably, like new method for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does almost the same, but with one uh, huge difference. Yeah, it returns not milliseconds, but nanoseconds, but it actually it's not important. What is really important uh, is that uh, current time millis uh, returns actual date. You know, how many milliseconds is spent from like beginning of our era and so on, but it's it returns real date. And in case if some like system services synchronize time differently, it returns different times and it might return even negative times and so on. But nano time is, it doesn't suffer from this problem. It's actually, it's not connected to any real time. It's just some abstract counter, which is guaranteed to increase every nanosecond, <laughs> plus one. Uh, and it can start with absolutely any random value, probably even negative value, but it's not connected to real time. So yeah, always is uh, recommended to use nano time for measuring times, yeah? So it's not really a time, but just a counter. Yeah, it's just a counter. No, in some sense, yeah, it's not connected to real time. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah, some, in some sense, it's time uh, from JVM start, something like that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the summary is that it's recommended to use nano time, but the funny moment that exactly the fact that we used like bad way to measure time this fact helped us to discover the issue, actually. <laughs> uh, let's stop with technical stuff and let's see some more like entertaining stuff with pictures and videos. Uh, another example of uh, flaky test, which was a little bit hard to investigate in the beginning, I call it NBOP. Once upon a time, many years ago, we did an internet bank for, uh, in kiosk mode you know, in, in like public places with big screens, it calls, it, it was called kiosk. And we want, wanted to write, uh, we had actually automated test, which could, we tried to log in to Internet Bank. This automated test, uh, uh, which, which it uh, tried, it tried to enter username Bob. This is username here. It tried to internet username Bob in this place. How it did? Uh, test tried to find letter B, click it, then find letter O, click it, and again find letter B and click it. At most of the times this test worked, everything was okay, but sometimes, very rarely, this test failed, like because of wrong username, and when the test failed we saw on the screenshot that actually we had here not Bob username but in Bob. What? Like, how it's possible? We started looking, do we really have some nbob username in some of our uh, production code or tests? No, we did not find any nbob string anywhere in project. We looked in all kinds of Excel files, databases, wherever uh, we didn't find nbob in no places. How it's possible that nbob like, is visible here? Is it a bug in test or in production code or what happened here? Uh, like some asynchronous request or what happened exactly? When started looking into the code, uh, started no, like tried to debug this code uh, and uh, like experimentally we found that, yeah, we applied binary search. So we tried to like comment half of lines and run test again and again. And experimentally, we find, found out that the letter N 
appears there after this line. So when, when the test did like body click, then letter N appeared. And then and then the next line like added Bob here. So how exactly why the N letter appeared? And now if you look on this you know, to this picture, you probably might guess. Hmm? Exactly, yeah. N is exactly in the middle of the screen and body click clicks in the middle of the screen. Uh, that's why uh, we had n bob another yeah yeah it's a good question let's see it uh, next slide but uh, another question is why this test did not fail every time this is an interesting question if this test would fail every time it would be easy to debug it it would be easy to find out what happens but it failed like not every time uh, let's see answers. Yeah, first of all, why the click was needed? It was hard to find out why. And uh, the only theory was that uh, probably someone clicked body to uh, like move focus out of some previous input. It was like important to to move focus out of element. But Selenium doesn't have such a method. JavaScript also doesn't have such a method like move focus out like blurs. Okay, probably JavaScript apps. Yeah, and uh, somebody like just found this way to move focus out of element, and he did not think that this click might occasionally click some something, something else. Yeah. So moral here is that uh, yeah, don't insert anything into body. Don't click just in case something. Yeah. But uh, answer for the second question, why it didn't fail any time? This test actually dependent on size of the browser window. Sometimes browser window could be smaller or bigger. It even depended on like your screen. Because uh, that time by default, uh, like browser was opened, like maximized on the whole screen. On some displays it might fail, on some other displays it did not fail. And if you run test in headless mode, in like Jenkins, there is as much as I know, uh, size is not like s defined, is not specified. It quite it might be quite random. That's why I yeah took another takeaway <laughs> that probably it's a bad practice to start browsing window browser window maximized as many 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 do actually, and instead of that, it's a good idea to fix browser size and put probably the minimal, minimal resolution that your application supports. Yeah. And another, uh, from some Selenite version, we even uh, like deprecated and even removed the setting yeah, from version five, I guess. Exactly because of this flaky test. And uh, another takeaway is don't trust. I guess uh, that body click was added like just trying to overcome some problems, just trying to like move focus without deeply thinking uh, how to achieve the same uh, goal like properly. Uh, <clears throat> and this is uh, a little bit theory. theory yeah. Uh, do you really know how click works in Selenium? It's interesting and actually it's the reason of many flaky tests. Click in Selenium uh, works like a little bit strangely. It works in two steps, and this is a problem. It does really two steps. When you call like some element click, Selenium, first of all, finds the coordinates of this element, of center point of this element, and second step, it clicks on these coordinates. Yeah. What might, might go wrong? <laughs> yeah, uh, what can possibly go wrong, yeah? If something happens, uh, in between these two steps. For example, if between these two steps the element was uh, moved, was uh, resized, or some other element was uh, resized exactly at this moment, so, and so on. Uh, yeah, and what might happen, Selep Selenium clicks at this point, but uh, at this moment element is not at this place anymore. So the, yeah, it often happens. Uh, let me show one uh, small experiment. I I wrote uh, like yeah many of experiments. 
For example, this one. I created a dedicated like page which has a moving element and test uh, just calls click in a loop. <laughs> and this page like tracks uh, was the click exactly at this point or it was missing. Yeah, and we saw that it was missing quite a lot. Another experiment was we are trying to click element which is resizing all the time. Uh, yeah. But you see that quite often it misses. It clicks not exactly the right point. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. In most cases, it not a, it's not a problem if you click not exactly the center, but a little bit, like side. It's not a problem in most cases, but sometimes it may even click outside of the element. Yeah, just it's even harder to reproduce this case, but it's possible. Yeah, we will see. Uh, how to overcome this uh, problem with click? It may be done differently. In some projects, we actually disable animations during test run. I know that many don't like this approach, but yeah, it's actually a really stable approach. This is just one example how to how we disabled animations in one project which used jQuery, so it's it's quite new project. Uh, uh, yeah, something like that. We just we had to Google and find out some CSS styles and like JavaScript snippets. Yeah, this magic code disables animations in jQuery. Probably it's also possible to find out similar code for any other frameworks like Vue, whatever, Svelte and so on to disable animations. This is one option. Yeah, but it's, it has one, one hard thing. Why it's not always simple to uh, apply this approach because you need, it means that you need to do one disgusting thing. You need to do one really hard thing. Yeah, you need to talk with developers and ask to add such a code in production application. Right. For many, it's, uh, it's a big obstacle for some reason, but yeah, I believe it, it should not be obstacle. Uh, another example, uh, uh, check and click. Yeah, let me show another video. Once upon a time, we have we had a test that uh, needed to do uh, to think. Uh, you will see that currently will be uh, loaded some table of elements, and the test want to uh, check one checkbox and click the button. Let's see. The test checks this uh, checkbox, checkbox, and clicks the button. And uh, I especially added some artificial code some highlighting there, if the click uh, clicks the button, the button changes from blue to green. You see, in the beginning button is blue, and if uh, test successfully clicks element, it, it becomes uh, green. Yeah, this is, this is a successful test. In most cases, it works like this way and everything is fine. Uh, but sometimes this test failed and button did not really become green. Very rarely, again. It, uh, uh, let's see this is the same running test a uh, little bit slower. Why exactly it could not fail? Yeah, we can see that what what uh, happens here that we have silver elements loading quickly, and dreamy elements loading slowly. For some reason, some day it's not a general rule, but at some days it happens so that dreamy was slow. Uh, but for some reason, dreamy is more important than silver. And three main lines should be uh, like in the beginning of the table. Uh, so what happened? Uh, test uh, was trying to check some seller checkbox, but seller was moving at, the, at this moment. And then uh, test tried to click this button, and button also was moving because of loading creamy. Yeah. In most cases, it works. In most cases, it can click the button. But, and so to, to make this video and reproduce the failure, I had to uh, like rerun the same test in loop many times. Once works, other case works, third time works, fourth time. Yep, it didn't click the button. You see, click button remains blue. 
click miss at the button. <coughs> this is exactly the case how, how click works. And now this is an interesting question, how to fix it? How to fix it? Uh, one option, most commonly used option, is to just to put asleep. Just put asleep, to which like guarantees that the table is fully loaded, and then check and click. Uh, you probably all know why it's a bad idea, because it makes our tests much more slower. This test will always wait three seconds, even if actual table loads very, very quickly. And another problem is that sometimes three seconds is not enough. Sometimes table is still loaded a little bit longer, and then your test will still fail. Uh, another option was to disable animations, like I, I showed it before, but yeah, not, not everybody thinks that this is a good idea. Some people say that this is a bad idea because it probably hide, hides some bugs like caused by animation. Okay, good point. Yeah, in this case, it would not help even. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good point. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, good, good point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I believe that actually the right fix uh, is like this: we need to change post production code and test code. And production code should be. Uh, yeah, you you probably could uh, see that actually we have a usability issue here because uh, the button is enabled already immediately in the very beginning before any data is loaded. I would say that this is a bug, this is a usability issue. But the problem is that this is not a big issue. Like real clients do not do not suffer from it. They can wait and click, they can click once, oops, miss it, click again, oops, miss it, click again, works. These are users which are faster than computers, yeah that they are also smart. So in re this is a usability issue, but like low priority, zero priority. This is a problem. And I would say that I would fix this issue like this in production code. I, was, I would disable the button in the very beginning or even probably hide the button. Then load all the data that only then enable the button. For me, this is a proper behavior of the application. And, and it would allow me to, in test site, like uh, first wait until this button is enabled and only then click it, like easy. It, was, it would be really stable test without any problems. Uh, uh, let's see what's next. Uh, <coughs> yeah, how to fix it. Mm -hmm. And I tried to make a video of like a uh, fix it uh, button, which is like disable it in the beginning yeah. Then after loading, it becomes enabled. Then we can check it. Yeah. So it works. Mm -hmm. So we got a stable test, and we fix it usability issue. And that's my goal here to motivate you to make proper proper fixes. To talk to developers, to ask to add some locators or some disable some buttons at the right moments, uh, instead of like putting sleeps in tests. I'm trying to motivate you to like find proper proper solutions. Uh, and the last example is a curse of the grid button. This is an example where we could not find uh, uh, the reason. Absolutely, we tried to add logs, we tried to debug, investigate, to find code. We could not find absolutely any explanation why is it this test sometimes failed. And only video, only video helped us. Uh, let's see this video. Oops, sorry. Uh, this was absolute, yeah, magic how it happened. Sorry again, the text are in Russian, don't read them, I will comment. Uh, we had the test that tried to click uh, a button. It, uh, details are not, not important here, it tried to fill some fields, click button, yeah, this is the important part. The test was trying to enter uh, one-time password here, like uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, and click submit button. Yeah, click submit button, and most cases in most in most cases again that this test uh, t worked, but very rarely. Uh, sometimes it failed, 
and it stayed exactly on this page. Like this test should click this button and like get to the next page, but sometimes this test uh, remained on this page without any errors. Just test is waiting on this page for something. Just is waiting. We checked all the Ajax requests, all the logs, all the, like smart uh, waits for timeouts. We could not find anything, any explanation. Why is the test uh, like like clicked button, but like didn't click the button and didn't get to the next page. And only video, only only when I found the library to save videos from running tests, only using this video I could find the explanation how what exactly happens. Uh, let's uh, look again on this uh, important place. Uh, now I run this uh, video like slower, it, uh, much slower. What happens? Test uh, enters uh, these zeros there and now tries to click the green button. Did you see it? What happened? Let's run this video again even more uh, slower. What now happened? Test and clicks SMS, enters 40 here and now looks below. Look below. There is button, but but there is a gray progress bar which appears for like one millisecond and disappears. This is a problem. And click sometimes get exactly not to the button but to the gray uh, progress bar. Yeah, look what once again. Four zeros, look at the button. Dish, it's covered by progress bar, you see. And progress bar disappears now. Oops, disappeared. So in most cases, test could click the button, but sometimes it clicked the progress bar. Yeah. Uh, yes, there is a way for browser to know if the page is loaded. Uh, actually, Selenium by default waits for the full loading of page, but this uh, in technical terms, it means like event document ready, something. But nowadays, all the pages works like we using asynchronous background requests and so on. So the page is loaded, but it still runs some background requests all the time, still refreshing something. In this case, page was loaded quickly, but then something happened. For some reason, browser decided to show progress bar for one millisecond. And actually, if uh, yeah, if we think. Uh, <laughs> about this problem, why why browser uh, decided to show the progress bar. Uh, the real reason is, uh, the real reason is that actually for some reason this HTML page is too white. It's too white, it's too long. And actually there is a lot of important information there on the right of the screen, out of the screen. Actually this is again usability issue. We should uh, change layout of this page uh, so that all the important information should fit into the page. This was really ugly layout of this table. Yeah, but nobody complained. <laughs> like real users could find all the information, but test yeah suffered from it. Uh, <clears throat> in some sense, this is a like big point for me that very often when a test fails, it uh, it signals about usability issue in the application which is not so much important from business side for you probably, but yeah, we should, we could uh, fix it. Yeah. This is a good question. Uh, usually we run tests on Chrome or in like bigger companies, bigger projects, they do run tests on all browsers. Like meaning Chrome, Firefox, uh, something like Edge. Earlier it was Internet Explorer. Uh, and as much as I know, most of people do not run tests on Safari because Safari like is uh, ugly in that sense. It, it does not, uh, it, uh, it like Apple does not provide web driver for Safari for some reason. This is the only browser which does not have like good web driver. 
all other uh, browser providers like provide browser and web driver acceptable yeah <laughs> so it, it's possible to run test on uh, safari but it's hard it, it often fails yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. Selenium is often used for scraping. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't understand who uh, who did update. Selenium, yes, Selenium is open source. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Google, Google is especially smart in that sense. A few years ago, I wrote, I wrote a, U, a UI test for Gmail, which tried to log in to Gmail and check that inbox has like five letters, but uh, I cannot uh, run this test anymore because Google always answers, sorry, you cannot log in. You are not allowed to log in with Selenium to Gmail. And I cannot overcome this. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, Selen <laughs> Google is smart. Like, why not use explicit weights of Selenium instead of Selenite? So basically, it does the same function, just waits when some element appears and then run remaining test. Yeah, the question is why not use uh, Selenium ex uh, explicit weights? Uh, in some sense, yeah, actually, Selenite uh, methods like should have visible and so on, it's exactly the same thing that Selenium uh, expected weights, but it has much more concise syntax and it has many benefits like for example in case of test failure it prints out a very readable error message screenshot and so on and so on and so on thank but you for the presentation are there are things uh, which we can't test or it's very difficult to test using for example this tool or any other tool in principle testing other things which we can't test uh, testing other things that are not testable you mean for example uh, for example, <laughs> yeah, of course, there is a lot of things that are harder to test. For example, if you have uh, Flash, some site using Flash technology, it's not like almost automatable. Uh, some games, for example, some native applications uh, on Windows, uh, yeah, it's technically possible to test, but it's much more harder, and this test will be much more flaky again. Uh, I didn't uh, try it yet, but yeah, canvas. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Then this is the same problem. Uh, like uh, uh, we cannot like find element by ID or something like that and click it. And the only way is to find elements by coordinates, for example, which is much more flaky. Yeah. Just shortly. Sometimes you should basically simulate uh, human behavior. Right, correctly. So, is it always so easy for you? Is it all the basic actions, or sometimes it can be complicated to simulate human behavior, even uh, such? Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, this is a very good question. When I write automated tests, it's often uh, hard to emulate real user behavior. Uh, if you mean that user should shift cursor to the right and very quickly to the left and like find some drop down. Yeah, it's often hard to simulate, and for my opinion, people often do this mistake that they uh, do all the best to really simulate user behavior. And for me, this is actually the wrong target. This is a wrong goal. The real goal of automated tests is not to emulate uh, like real life tests. Is not real goal of automated tests is to automate uh, all the things that are easy to automate. <laughs> it's hard to explain, probably. 
But yeah, the point is that manual testers are smarter in some aspects and robots are smarter in some aspects. And we need to use humans in these areas where others are smarter and we need to use robots in these areas where they are smarter. Like, simple, yeah. It's, it's not uh, the goal to absolutely replace people. Yeah. It's not possible and it's not yeah, reasonable. Yeah. was also a question over there. Yeah. For the Gmail test, did you try disabling the JavaScript or do you know this thing like the Gmail basic version is there? Whereby you can say load basic HTML. Uh, probably not. Did yeah. no, I did uh, not try. Uh, yeah, you, there's one thing called load. The, when, you are, when the web page is slow or something, there will be a thing in the down saying load basic HTML in Gmail. Gmail. Ah, okay. No, I didn't try it. Yeah, yeah. you can probably try it. I might try, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Not only you can teach something, but you also can learn something. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, of course. Actually, I had a lot of uh, other slides also, but yeah, probably it's time to to finish it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I th I think we can squeeze in a couple more questions to 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 make it a nice ending. So, if any 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 questions have left, you made it also clear. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Andrei. It was a great one, as always. Yep. Also, a pair of socks to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for uh, joining us. And uh, again, uh, this is it for tonight. Uh, massive thanks to WISE for, for hosting this one. And uh, we at Dev Club are working hard on, on, on the next one already. And it is likely to come uh, following month, early August, likely. So stay tuned and make sure you don't miss it. In the meantime, enjoy the summer, have fun, and see you in a month.